Hey everyone, let's do another quick video here. So I've got a mic cable and I don't like this particular XLR and I don't think it looks very nice. There's nothing wrong with this XLR and it works fine. Now it is a bit of a cheap cable so I'm sure this wasn't soldered very well but anyway I want to put this XLR on instead of this. This video is all about how you basically build your own mic cables. Let's get started. With this type of XLR this is one manufactured by Switchcraft and these come apart by use of a flathead screwdriver. You simply loosen these little screws on either side of the barrel. You don't need to take them all the way out. They're like these little plug screws. Just loosen them so that they're sticking out like that. Then you'd stick your screwdriver in this one and loosen it. But this is a reverse thread screw so it'll actually sink in as you go counterclockwise. At that point this whole shell will come apart like this. There's your solder joints. Let's get a closer look at those. So you'll notice on your solder connections you've got three terminals. You've got red, blue, and then what looks like the braid all twisted up and going to a third terminal. On the very end here you'll see that they've labeled which pin is which. The one on the farthest right here is pin 1. The one on the far left here is pin 2 and down here on the bottom is pin 3. This is a balanced audio connector meaning that one of these wires sends the signal in a positive waveform, the other one sends it as a negative waveform and then this acts as the ground, this braid. What having the positive and negative waveforms do is that they cancel out any sort of noise. Now I want to reuse this XLR connector. so. I'm not just going to cut it off and throw it away, I'm going to desolder it cleanly. At this point all you need to do is slide this guy all the way out and now you've got a connector that you can reuse in a future project if you're in a pinch and need an XLR. The new connector I'm going to use is a little bit easier to work on. This one's made by Neutrik. And this one comes apart just by unscrewing it. So you've got this end cap, then you've got this black piece. This acts as the strain relief. Then by pushing through the black part on the very end, you'll see this starts to come out. And there's the inner workings. Now I've got a bit of cable left from when I took this connector off of a previous cable. I simply snipped it to make it easier. So I'm going to need to clean this up. Now I'm not going to try and re-solder these individual wires back onto this new XLR. I suppose it's possible to do but look at how nasty they are. We're not going to do that. Let's cut this cable back and strip out some new wires to use. Now ideally you'll have some sort of wire strippers that you can use on these individual conductors but we're going to want to strip this back so you get more of the jacket away. The way I've always done it is just by using a utility knife and just carefully scoring around the outside of the jacket. Don't try to cut too far into it otherwise you'll cut that braid. Just get deep enough so you can see in there and then with just a little bit of gentle persuasion it'll start to stretch and tear away and then pop off the end. Now what you're left with is this braid. I'd like to try to figure out which way it's generally twisted around the rest of the cables and then untwist it in that same direction. It is always going to be coming around like that. Simply twist it. You notice that we've also got some twine in here. Some cables will be made with twine on the inside, some will have nice cotton, some will just be cheap paper. In any event we need to cut that away. That simply acts as a strain relief so that if you're really tugging on the cable you don't tug on the inner wires. You're kind of pulling against that twine. For this connector we only need so much. I actually don't want too much wire inside the connector. The next thing we want to do is tin these leads so that they don't be just bare copper trying to go into the ends of this pins. Tinning the leads is basically getting solder all the way through these so let's do that next. Get some solder at the ready here as well as my soldering iron. Then it's simply a matter of getting your iron up underneath the wire, heating it up and then feeding some solder into it. And you'll notice that as you heat the wire up, it'll suck the solder in like that. So 
So now you can see we've got those wires tinned. They've got a layer of solder all the way down them. That makes it a lot easier to solder to the ends of the connector. Now before I get too far ahead of myself, I don't want to forget doing a couple of things before soldering this guy on there. First things first is this cap needs to go down the wire. Probably could have done this earlier. And the other thing is that this strain relief can go down there as well. Now you're not totally screwed if you forget to put this on because it is split down the side. But regardless, it still needs to go on there. So the easiest way I've found to jam these in there is to actually kind of squeeze this in. It'll open up those teeth, those prongs, and then you can simply snap the cable in through that slot and then pull it down the wire. So those two bits are done. Now we're ready to take our tinned leads and solder them to the XLR connector. One thing to keep in mind is that you have to keep the pin out the same between both ends of the cable. I know that the other end of this XLR cable has the red wire on pin two and the blue wire on pin three, which means our ground braid goes to pin one. So let's try and get this kind of laid out the way it needs to work. So we've got pin two closest to us. Pin three is this one on the bottom. And then the ground goes over to there. Now you can kind of see just about how much wire we really need. So you just eyeball it up and then go at it with your wire trimmers to try and shorten it as appropriate. So we've gotten the wire for pin three shortened, the blue one. Let's get that guy soldered on there. It's kind of tricky to do this without a helping hand type of device, but if I use one of those, it gets in your way of being able to see. That's really all there is to it. This is a brand new connector. You're probably not gonna have too much solder in there. So what you'll need to do is go at it again like this. And I'll do that because I need a little more solder in here anyway. There you have it. Your three connections all made. Note the short distance between the end of the jacket and the actual part of the XLR. Now all we gotta do is reassemble. So that guy slides in there like that and it is keyed. It only goes in one way. The strain relief then slides down and it also only goes in one way. Note this little key here, that slides in like that. And then this piece simply comes in on the back. When you thread this guy on, it's actually a compression fitting to pinch down those teeth on the strain relief. So it doesn't look like there's a strain relief on the back, but there is one. That's what keeps your solder connection secure. So now we've got a new XLR on this end and we kept the old XLR on the other end. And this is essentially a decent cable now that is not ugly and I can use on stage. Uh, you can do this to old cables. You can build brand new cables this way. Some people do do that. They just buy bulk cable and put their own ends on there. That's a great way to do it. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. That really helps. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button right down there at the bottom. And as always, thank you so much for watching.